Alhamdulillah, all praise belongs to Allah, the Lord of the whole of the creation, and peace and blessings upon the final prophet and messenger who came to confirm the message of every prophet, of every prophet and messenger that came before him. The reality is that Islam is a religion that is in accordance to divine revelation. It is in accordance to our natural fitrah, the way Allah created us. And it is the religion that is in accordance to our logic. And that is why the Islamophobes and those who want to preach xenophobic attitudes towards the Muslims, they want to spread lies and they want to demonize Islam and the Muslims. The reality is of which Islam was spread not by the sword. This is a myth that the far right want to present to the world. In reality, Islamic history, it proves that that is a lie and a fabrication. Rather, if we look, when the Prophet ﷺ, he came and he was sent to the whole of mankind, and he came with La ilaha illallah, none has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah alone. We found that you had slaves who would embrace the messenger of Islam. You would have the nobles from the Quraysh like Abu Bakr who embraced the messenger of Islam. And Allah through the Quran, he opened, he opened Medina, a whole city. Do we have any example like that? Where a message, because of its clarity, it opened and it conquered a whole city. There was no sword. A whole city was opened by the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And brothers, the point I want to make today, inshallah ta'ala, alhamdulillah, we have beautiful weather. I want to be brief. Bi'indillahi ta'ala. Is that Islam, it is simple, especially for the non-Muslims. Islam, it is the religion of Jesus. It is the religion of Abraham. It is the religion of Moses. It is not, barakallahu feekum, it is not a religion that is extreme. Was Moses extreme? Was Jesus extreme? Was Abraham extreme? Was Adam extreme? Was Noah extreme? No, they were not. They were the best of mankind. The prophets and the messengers. What was their message? Their message was consistent from the first of them to the last of them. The message was what? Worship Allah alone, the Lord of Moses, the Lord of Jesus the Lord of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and forsake all types of idolatry and paganism. That was the message of Jesus. If you look in the Ten Commandments, one of the Ten Commandments, number one is what? You shall have no gods besides me. That is the message of Islam. That is not the message that we find Christians promoting here and everywhere else. That Jesus is God, some of them. That Jesus is the Son of God the Trinity and the like of these things, that does not make sense. And rather it opposes the message of all of the prophets and messengers. That's what Allah he said in the Quran. There's a beautiful verse, a verse that conquers the arguments of the atheists, a verse that conquers the arguments of the polytheists. It is the saying of Allah Azza Were they created from nothing or did they themselves create themselves? There's only one of three possibilities. Am min ghayri shay. Were they created from nothing? That's impossible. That's what the atheist wants you to believe. That is ludicrous. That everything came into existence by chance. It was random, no design. That is ludicrous, who would accept that? If I said to you that Mercedes or BMW, it came together by chance, you would laugh at us. You would think that we have lost our minds. That is the narrative that the atheist wants to preach and promote. Am min ghayri shay'in. Were man created from nothing? Am hum al Or did they create themselves? And also, that cannot be the case. How can something that did not exist create itself? That is why we have the Creator, Allah Azza wa and the creation. And the Creator deserves to be worshipped along without any partners. As the brother, he mentioned the ayah, that was the call of every prophet and messenger. We sent to every nation a messenger 
commanding them to worship God, Allah alone without any partners, and to stay away from a Tagut false deities. If we are having a discussion and calling people to what we say is the truth, Naam and Islam is the truth. In the deen and Allah is Islam, the religion with Allah is Islam. Why do we find people, they have to resort to lies? They will tell you that Muslims worship a moon god. Kedib, one verse in the Quran, it refutes that. مِنَ الْبِدَايَ لَلْنِحَايَ وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ اللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارِ وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ لَا تَسْجُدُوا لِلشَّمْسِ وَلَا لِلْقَمَرُ وَاسْجُدُوا لِلَّهِ الَّذِي خَلَقَهُنَّ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ from the signs of Allah, the Lord of all of the prophets, the Lord of Jesus, the Lord of Muhammad, the Lord of Abraham, is the night and the day, the sun and the moon. Do not prostrate to the sun and the moon. Prostrate to Allah, the one who created them, if you truly worship him alone. Brothers and sisters, another issue I want to touch upon briefly. This issue of race, it is being used to divide us, especially the Muslims. وَلَا تَسْتَغْرِبُوا don't be amazed and do not be surprised. At the time in Al-Madinah, remember when they came to the tribes of Al-Madinah from the believers and they tried to divide them based upon tribalism, saying to them, remember when you used to fight against one another. Remember Fulan, he killed so-and-so from your family. Remember such and such. To stir animosity and hatred between them. But the Prophet wasallam, he would come to the companions and he would remind them about the essence of unity, which is what? What is our connection to one another? Even the connection that the angels, they seek forgiveness for the righteous servants of Allah Azza It is la ilaha illallah. It is the foundation of the religion. None has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah Azza That is our connection that we have with one another. Allah Azza he says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal nas, O mankind, inna khalaqnaakum min dhakarin wa untha. We created you from male and female. We all come from the same place. Whether you are black, whether you are white, whether you are Arab, whether you are non-Arab, we all came from Adam and Eve. We all come from the same place, regardless of the color of our skin, regardless of the tribe that we belong to. Allah said in the Quran, Ya ayyuhannas, O mankind, inna khalaqnaakum min dhakarin wa untha. We created you from male and female. Do not boast on the account of your tribe. Do not boast upon the account of your color. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبَ وَقَبَائِلَ لِتَعَارَفُمْ إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ We made you into tribes and nations, different colors, speaking different languages. Why? So you may know one another, but the best of you before Allah are those with the most piety. What other religion preaches that? Islam, excellence, it depends upon the piety of the individual. A taqwa, what is piety built upon? Piety is built upon a tawheed, Islamic monotheism, to worship Allah Azza wa alone without any partners. So the more the servant perfects this, the better they are before Allah Azza wa Jal, tabarak wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, do not allow people to divide you upon racial lines. So and so, we are this, so and so, we are that. What unites us is la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. None has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Chinese Muslim is our brother. The white Muslim is our brother. The Arab is our brother. The only thing that differentiates between us is piety. Who from amongst us is best in deeds? Because you have individuals, race, with regards to what is going on in around, the, around the world. Now emotions blind people. Emotions, yes, and racism exists. Prejudice exists. People now, without a shadow of a doubt, there is racism with regards to blacks. That's a fact. No one can deny it. There is racism. There is prejudice with regards to the Muslims. No one can deny it. However, for us, what matters? What matters, brothers and sisters, is the belief of the individual and their adherence to La ilaha illallah. None has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah Azza wa alone without any partners. And I will give you a story. A story from Islamic history that is well known. In Islam, do you know a religion like this? Remember the hadith that we find. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Inna Allah yarfa'u bihaad al-kitab aqwaman. Allah will raise a people with this book. Wa yada'a bihi akhareen. And Allah will humiliate other people if they abandon this book. In Islam, people became leaders and judges based upon their knowledge of the book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to the extent it was said to one of the companions after he advised that a freed slave was appointed as a leader of a particular vicinity and place. They said, so-and-so, you're going to appoint him? And he's a freed slave? And they mentioned the hadith. Verily, Allah raises a people with this book. 
Meaning if you adhere to the Quran and the Sunnah, Allah will raise you regardless of your color. Look now from our scholars, you have Sheikh Muhammad Adam, an Ethiopian, an Ethiopian from the Muhaddithin of this time. You had Sheikh Muhammad Aman al-Jami, likewise. You have Mashaykh, ulama, major scholars from Africa, Saudi Arabia, Yemen. Sheikh al-Albani was a white European. Who was more? Who served hadith more in this time than Sheikh al-Albani? I ask the Muslims, do we ever, ever hear any of those scholars come with nationalistic calls? Any of them? Never. So brothers and sisters, with regards to us as Muslims, the mas'uliya is azimah, the responsibility is great. To invite the non-Muslims to the clear message of Al-Islam. To avoid a lot of the divisionary tactics of some. To stay focused. The Prophet Sallallahu when he came, he came with the Quran. To the extent when he recited ayat of the Quran, all it took was for a person to hear one verse and it would suffice him. Like for example, the ayah we mentioned, Am khuliqu min ghayri shay'in am humul khaliqun. Were they created from nothing or did they create themselves? One of the companions said, when I heard that verse, my heart almost flew out from my chest. Because when a person who is sincere, and there's a difference between someone who is sincere, we haven't got time to debate with foolish people who just want to debate and people just want to scream. But somebody who is looking for the truth, yes, we have time for them. And we will sit with them and we will explain to them using the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look, one verse, the companion, he said, my heart nearly came from my chest. What is better than the book of Allah Azza wa Jal? And that's why as Muslims, if we want to give da'wah, we have to learn. Barakallahu feekum. Astadhinukum. I seek, you know, permission. We have a lesson in East London. May Allah Azza wa Jal protect the Muslims wherever they are. And may Allah Azza wa Jal guide the non-Muslims to Al-Islam. And may Allah Azza wa Jal protect us from what we witnessed in New Zealand, from the atrocities that we've seen. Naam. And as I saw a journalist, he said, Ikhwan, he said, we are not surprised because some people are pretending like they're amazed and surprised at what happened in New Zealand. Why are we surprised? Look at the rhetoric that we find in some of the tabloid press. Look at the rhetoric that you find even on some programs on the BBC where they try and demonize Islam and make the Muslims who try to adhere to the religion of Islam appear to be backward. Look at the language that is used by some of the politicians that we find being elected in Germany Look at the language that we witnessed about from the politician in Australia who is an elected member. Imagine if a Muslim said anything similar to that. The thing that is fueling the right wing is this rhetoric where majority of Muslims condemn extremism. Majority of Muslims condemn ISIS. We condemn ISIS, we have been vocal with it. We condemn Qaeda and we have been vocal with it. We condemn Boko Haram and we have been vocal with it. We condemn Shabab and we have been vocal with it. The problem is when the media want to portray Islam and the Muslims, who do they invite? Anjum Chowdhury. When the media want to talk about Muslims, either they invite somebody from the extreme right or somebody from the extreme left. Anjum Chowdhury does not represent any of the Muslims except for that marginalized deviant group known as Muhajirun. And they have never been mainstream Muslims. So why if we want to portray the Islamic correct moderate narrative are we inviting the likes of Anjum Chowdhury? Why when for example we see attacks like took place in New Zealand, do we see the media inviting the far right? Do we see them putting the KKK forward to present their narrative? We never find it. Why do we not find it? Because they want to present that they are moderate, they are balanced and so on and so forth. When we have a message, the Muslims, walillahilham, they are moderate and balanced because Allah Azza wa Jalla, He says, we have made you a balanced nation. We are balanced in terms of our beliefs and we are balanced in terms of our conduct and our behavior and the way that we interact with people. Ask people who live next to Muslims, who are Muslim neighbors and the interactions. How many of them have had a bad word to say? Majority of them will tell you that that Muslim neighbor, they were honorable. That Muslim neighbor, they had integrity. Why? Because that's from our religion. May Allah Azza wa Jalla grant the Muslim success and may Allah forgive us for our shortcomings and our sins. In Islam.